Thank you. First speaker, when you get to sit down after your lunch, so I'll try and keep you awake. <laughs> um, the uh, personal papers of the architect, Professor Sir Leslie Martin, were purchased by the National Galleries of Scotland in 2002, and his professional papers were acquired by the Royal Institute of British Architects, REBA, in the same year. Um, the Edinburgh Archive uh, mainly consists of three major correspondences between Martin and his, and his wife, the designer Sadie Spate, and Nam Garbo, Barbara Hepworth, and Ben Nicholson. And this paper examines that with Hepworth, which covers the period from 1935 to 1972 and contains 43 items, including letters and photographs. So is this the right note? Oh. Sorry, I'm just going to check that's the right one. There we go. Uh, so Leslie Martin, who we see on the left, is renowned as much for his groundbreaking architectural practice as for his research and his contribution to education. And he held many important public and academic positions, um, such as being architect to the London County Council uh, from 1953 to 56 and professor of architecture at Cambridge University from 1956 to 1972. And he was the architect of some remarkable post-war buildings, including the Royal Festival Hall on London South Bank and the Gulbenkian Foundation Centre for Modern Art in Lisbon in 1979. Um, and closer to my home, the Royal Scottish Academy of Music and Drama in Glasgow from 1987. Uh, Sadie Spate, who we see on the right, uh, was also a qualified architect. They both trained at Manchester, and she had a celebrated career as a designer. In 1938, she was jointly commissioned with Martin by Herbert Reed to write The Flat Book, a reference book on contemporary furniture, fabric, and household products. Uh, Spate was a founder member of the Design Research Unit of the Council of Industrial Design and became renowned for her interior design schemes. Uh, she and Leslie Martin married in 1935. Uh, Martin and Spate first saw the work of Ben Nicholson at the Mayor Gallery in London in April 1934, and shortly afterwards they visited Nicholson in his studio in Hampstead, uh, which he shared with Hepworth, and thus began a lifelong connection between the quartet based on friendship, uh, patronage, and collaboration. The most obvious form of collaboration came about after Nicholson and Hepworth introduced Martin and Spate to Naum Garbo in 1936 at the opening of the Abstract and Concrete Exhibition. Uh, interests within the group were so closely affiliated that Leslie Martin became co-editor with Nicholson and Garbo of Circle International S uh, Survey of Constructive Art, which was published in 1937. Uh, Spate acted as secretary and with Hepworth decided its layout. Um, this project is um, more fully covered in the Nicholson correspondence in the Edinburgh Archive and with the Reber's holdings um, rather than in the Edinburgh Hepworth material. Is that legible at all? Yeah, I'm not convinced it's even in focus. <laughs> I've thank goodness I put the quote there. Um, so with regard to the Hepworth correspondence, this is the second letter from it um, in which she wrote to Spate and illustrates that combination of friendship and patronage which characterizes the material as a whole. Um, and it actually came with an invoice dated the 8th of January 1935 in which Hepworth listed three works with prices, two paintings by Nicholson and one drawing by her, uh, which the Martins had already purchased. And the accompanying letter updates them on personal and professional matters. Uh, she wrote, this week has been simply hectic. We have both made thousands and thousands of journeys up and down the mall, moving Ben into his new studio, carrying innumerable canvases and frames and furniture. We are more or less straight now, and Ben is very, very happy to have a quiet spot to paint in without the marble chips. And I am busy filling up seven the mall with lumps of marble and stone. So Martin and Spate's patronage was to prove vital to Hepworth, not least in financial terms. In an undated letter of 1937 or 38, she wrote to Spate about Nicholson's impending divorce from Winifred Nicholson. 
I wonder whether you and Leslie could possibly give me a date when you could pay the remo remaining bit owing for the carving and painting you got. I am taking you at your word in writing and asking you this because a frightful crisis has arisen. We were not properly informed about the costs of this divorce business. We thought we had to pay after the divorce, and now, quite suddenly, we find that the money has to be paid uh, into court before the case, and we have to find uh, £63 immediately, or they threaten to withdraw proceedings. Uh, knowing what this business means to Ben after all this long while, I feel I must make every effort." And Ben and Winifred's marriage was dissolved in 1938, and he and Hepworth married soon afterwards. Uh, at the end of August 1939, just days before the de declaration of war, uh, Hepworth Nicholson and their children moved to Cornwall. I'm very aware that I'm sure all of you know all of this backwards, um, where they were soon joined by Garbo and his wife, Miriam. Uh, not long afterwards, Martin and Spate moved from Hull to Hertfordshire, as Martin had been appointed principal assistant architect to the London, Midland and Scottish Railway. Hepworth described her new circumstances in a letter of late 1939. We seem to be starting a market garden. I have never done so much hard digging in my life. I miss my home and studio and work just like hell. But life is settling down and Ben gets time to paint now and very soon I hope to get time to do some sculpture. The landscape is miraculous. In December 1939, Hepworth and her family moved to uh, this house, Dunluce, um, a photograph of which was annotated by Nicholson and sent to the Martins. Uh, their support of Hepworth professionally and personally continued during the war. Uh, they offered to store some of Hepworth's sculpture for her, um, lent her and Nicholson money, uh, for example, 15 pounds in late 1939, and cheered them up with news of their own projects in London. Um, on the 9th of May 1940, uh, Hepworth wrote to Leslie Martin to announce a breakthrough in her work. Um, she wrote, in spite of various and endless other activities, I have achieved what I think is a good new sculpture. I have only done it very small, but now I'm going to do it bigger. It is another form and color which I am most interested in. And sadly, it's not very clear, but towards the upper left of the letter, she sketched um, what I think is the work on the right that Laura showed uh, yesterday. And the sketch is annotated, um, circular, deep blue intersecting hollows, uh, red intersecting cone, and conical white. She doesn't say anything about color of the string, I'm afraid. Um, and I, do, I think this is sculpture with color, deep blue and red, of which she made five small versions in plaster, of which the second is now in the Tate collection. Um, Hepworth went on to explain further and to ask for Martin's opinion and help. Uh, the strings, of course, are halfway between paintings and sculpture. I wanted to discover something I could do which would sell for five pounds. I am doing one or two copies of each. I should be most interested to know if you think they are any good. Um, if you do think so, would it be a bore for you to keep one or two and show them to anybody who might be interested and return the rest to me? And in fact, Martin and Spate did sort of persuade some of their friends to buy uh, some work by Hepworth and Nicholson during the war. Uh, the letter concluded with a reflection on this development, its overlap with Martin's professional interests and potential for continuing collaboration between them. She wrote... I think I have discovered how to use color and form together and to achieve a new power and experience, and I have discovered certain laws. I don't think anybody has done it before. Uh, to my knowledge, it has always been colored sculpture. You have done it in relation to architecture. There's a lot of work to be done, and I only hope there will be time because I think it has a direct bearing on a sort of pooled effort of architecture, sculpture, painting, and sociology. Um, in a letter of the early 1940s, she actually goes on to suggest revisiting that circle idea 
of um, 1937, in a letter of the early 1940s, she wrote to Martin, um, Garbo, Ben and I have had long discussions. We have decided we must start a wartime chronicle because we feel the absolute necessity for creating a vehicle of expression between us all and one that will make a link between those who are already in the Navy, Air Force and Army. Also a thing which will bring us together with those young and so far unheard of people. It is absolutely necessary in our minds to discover the new impulses and unite them. And she invited Martin to become editor um, for everything to do with architecture um, with Herbert Reed looking after prose and poetry, and Nicholson Garbo and herself looking after painting and sculpture. Um, however, in the next letter in the archive, um, she explained she did not feel it was the right time to publish this chronicle, but reflected on the group's shared aims and achievements, writing, I think all we did pre-war was a preparation for just this, Concrete expression may be at an end for the moment, as far as we are concerned, but ideas are not at an end and must be expressed energetically in living. We may even have to go through um, a long phase of suffering before the constructive idea springs up as an expression of the people. Our few houses, sculpture, paintings were only a preview or research. They were beginning, and they were the beginning and not the end of something. Um, as we know, Hepworth decided to stay in Cornwall after the war and in 1949 moved to Trerin studio and two years later she and Nicholson divorced. Um, in the meantime, Hepworth and Martin found themselves playing major roles in the Festival of Britain. Uh, Hepworth's first commission, uh, public commission, was from the Arts Council of Great Britain to create contrapuntal forms to stand on the South Bank in London during the festival. While Martin was responsible for the scheme concept and design for final completion of the nearby Royal Festival Hall, and in a letter of the 5th of April 1950, Hepworth wrote to Martin explaining that she was uh, simply longing to see the inside of the concert hall. The whole of last Friday and Saturday I spent on the festival site. I got the figures up safely and for half an hour I was able to consider them and I was pleased. It was the culminating point of the year's work. She continued... I was very stimulated by certain shapes and colours and methods of construction on the site and immensely excited when I walked all around the concert hall. The scale is so fine and its shape in relation to the position. I really longed to get in. It must be glorious to be an architect and to see such an immense sculpture grow almost overnight. Hepworth and Martin's post-war careers developed pace. Martin was knighted in 1957, and Hepworth was made a Dame of the British Empire in 1965. Martin's patronage evolved accordingly, for example, providing details of the sculptures and drawings by Hepworth, which he and Spate had acquired in the 1930s and 40s, for inclusion in a monograph about her work. Accordingly, Spate annotated the letter on the left from Hepworth of the 11th of April 1959 with sketches and cataloguing details of three sculptures, two gouaches and one collage in their collection, including two forms of 1938, which we can see on the right, and ball, plane and hole of 1936, which was on my first slide. The Hepworth correspondence in the Sir Leslie Martin uh, personal archive ends with a letter dated the 11th of January 1972 to him, in which she expressed her delight about the recent republication of Circle, 35 years after they had first published it. She said, I think I told you how glad I was about the republication of Circle. It has become a, a very favorite book with students. I looked at it with a cold eye, and I thought it was jolly good and very contemporary. Following Hepworth's death in 1975, Martin and Spate's support of her work and reputation continued. The last letter in the Martin Hepworth material is one from Martin of the 3rd of July 1986 to A.D. Fraser Jenkins of the Tate. In it, he explained what he knew of um, Hepworth's sculpture, Ball, Plain and Hole, which the Tate had acquired in 1982. Martin wrote... 
We never bought anything from galleries, always directly from the artists themselves, who were, of course, our friends. We bought our first Barbara in January 1935, a collage, San Remy of 1931. We still have this. Sadie Spate died in 1992 and Leslie Martin in 2000. As I explained, his personal archive was acquired two, late, two years later by the National Galleries of Scotland, and it contains the correspondence with Hepworth, which I've outlined. It pays testament to the friendship, patronage, and collaboration between Hepworth, Martin, and Spate, and you are all welcome to come to Edinburgh to consult it for yourselves. Thank you.